G'day aspiring engineers. In this video we are interviewing Douglas Gardai. He loves to fly model rockets and he's learning Fusion 360 and he's starting to make some parts for his model rockets in Fusion 360 so that he can 3D print them. Towards the end Douglas will be beginning to share a little bit about how he's planning to earn a little bit of money on the side with his model rockets and uh, making parts for them. Now, if you would like to learn a little bit more about uh, model rockets and maybe ask Doug a few questions, Doug has kindly agreed to answer some questions on a Facebook page, which I've set up. So I'll put the link for that page in the description below here. Please take a look at that. But let me just show you what that looks like here. Okay, here it is. And you can post questions if you have any questions for Doug. You can even ask questions about the 16 basic tutorials if you've got any questions. I look forward to talking to some of you guys here on the uh, on this Facebook page. What are you going to use Fusion 364 when you get good at it? The future starts now. So, uh, hi Douglas, welcome to Future Engineering. Thanks for being on the show. Great to have you with us, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more about rockets, which is what you're into, right? Well, uh, yeah, that's one of the few things I'm into. And you've been doing it for quite some time, eh? Yeah, it's like uh, I think I was between the ages of six and eight when I really got into them. And so now I'm 41 and, you know, off and on through those years, but usually I've done something at least once during the, you know, during the years, and sometimes I've done it several times in a year. And so, uh, Let's let's see now. What is it that you love about rockets? Fire, smoke. <laughs> you know, I always tell people, you know, if they ask me what I want for Christmas or my birthday or something, I say as long as it flies, shoots, or explodes, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can see that bow on the wall in the background, and a rocket behind you, and a three D printer. You were all set up, yeah. Douglas. Oh yeah. My wife wants me to show her her rocket. Hey, there's a nice one. Hey, it's pink. <laughs> yes, this this saved me, by the way. You know why? <laughs> Tell me the story. Well, Estes had this starter set plus the three other rockets in the series that I didn't have on sale for 70 bucks for the whole shebang. Uh -huh. Okay, now bear in mind these rockets are about, you know, 60 bucks to each to begin with. Okay, so now you get three rockets, the starter set, which included this pink one, had a launch pad and controller, all for a price of 70 bucks, and that was a steal, I ordered it. And then my wife said, you ordered rockets without asking me, and then when she <laughs> saw this one, she said, that's mine. <laughs> so I, 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 you know, I, I don't mind giving up my one of my pink rockets to keep her happy. <laughs> okay. So um, let, let's let's talk a little bit about rocketry. Um, now, there's different kinds of rocketry, isn't there? I did a little bit of research on YouTube, and I saw some fascinating things. You know, school kids having a great time, and uh, but then uh, some older people having uh, having a really serious time and having a great time at the same time. So tell us, what's 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 your part of rocketry? What what's what is it about rocketry that you're into? Okay, well, I mostly fly in the low to mid power um, range. Um, that's because it, rockets cost money and where I work I don't get much money so um, so when I do fly I like to fly something that's cheap easy to get you know uh, go down you know go down to a local hobby store pick the stuff up or go down to a department store that carries it um, the larger stuff the high powered stuff is a little bit hard to get a hold of a lot of it requires expensive shipping to us and so uh, I don't really do much of that I have probably do one high power launch a day usually not a day uh, a year um usually during our church camp in the middle of summer yep. i buy a high power rocket motor and do something really cool for them and uh like this this year i did one as a smaller rocket with a bigger motor and uh it did uh zero to 600 about 1.2 seconds you know so it had some massive acceleration. That's 600 miles per hour? Yeah. Say that one more time. In how much time? About a second and a quarter. One and a, one and a quarter seconds to yep. get to 600 miles an hour. That's awesome. Yeah. 
You don't want to. You don't want to accelerate that fast in person, though. <laughs> there wouldn't be much left of me. <laughs> You'd be like a pancake that happened. Yeah, that's right. So, what's the goal for uh, your rockets, Douglas? Are you trying to get to the uh, the highest altitude you possibly can, or is it the speed, or is it uh, just to uh, just the fun of it? What is it now? Well, I just like the, the it mostly be for, for the fire and smoke, like I mentioned. Yeah, yeah. You know, and sometimes it's like, can you get something to fly? Or, you know, like, um, I like sci-fi, and sometimes there's a, I like rockets, a kind of a sci-fi to it. And uh, I've actually designed a couple of my own. And then the actual, see if you can actually make the thing fly is the fun thing. Sure. Um, there's in the hobby there's all kinds of things some people there's contests i really haven't really been involved in contests and those contests can be like let's fly the highest um you know this record breaking people try to break the records there's people that do duration contests like you uh fly a rocket with a certain power motor and you know power class and you have that um get the longest parachute duration without going over the time limit Right. Those are always fun. I mean, you, you can put the biggest parachute you put in there, but you will float it over the time limit. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so there's a few things so. you can do, eh? Yeah. And then on the really high-end stuff, like, as I mentioned, there's low power, mid power, and high power. There's also what's called amateur rocketry. And that's where you actually put together your own rocket motors. And I've dabbled a bit of that myself. Um, not real recently. I had a friend that owned a company that made rocket motors. And so basically while I was there, I just, you know, um, we kind of made my own stuff on the side while I was there and filled up a couple of ammo cans of it and uh, still have some left. I lived in New Hampshire at the time, so my friend was in New Hampshire. So he moved down in 2007. So I still have a lot of propellant I made in 2007 still readily available. And I, once in a while, put together a motor of my own and fire it off. So, um, Douglas, what is it that you do for a living? I uh, work at a private Bible school oh, in yeah. Central Pennsylvania. Say been here at, what was that? What was the name of the, the school? It's uh, Penview Bible Institute. Penview Bible Institute. It's K-12 plus, well, I can't say college yet, but it's, it's, a, it's a four year program. We are accredited. Uh, so our credits do transfer to other colleges, but we can't call it a college until we meet the state requirements of becoming a college. So well, we do have yeah. we do have the accreditation, just we can't call ourselves a college yet. I bet there's a few students there that are interested in rockets. Oh yeah, it always draws a crowd, and that's always a fun thing because you know as I'm getting older, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be, and I'm also not the uh, fittest person in the world. <laughs> but usually when I start dragging my launch pad out into the out into the field, you know, all the neighbor kids see it and they they come a running and so I have no trouble um, getting my rockets back. A few shot by helpers. Yeah, they always show up. It's always fun. That's good. And Douglas, uh, you um, no doubt there's going to be other resources on the web and so on. Uh, if people want to learn a little bit about rockets and the sort of rockets that you're flying, um, how can they contact you and look you up and find out about what you're doing? Well, um, well, you mentioned that you started a little group on Facebook related yep. to this. So that's one place. Um, I do have a website, but I've really kept it up to date. Um, there's a lot of rocket launches I did on that. Um, that's Garday.com. Um, as I mentioned, I haven't kept it up to date. Um, perhaps when my endeavors with this 3D printing comes to fruition, I make up a few kits to sell, I might update it for that. Um, there's also, I'm on the Rocketry Forum, which is rocketryforum.com, which is a great source to find out information about rockets. Um, We'll put a link I'm to that YouTube. in the description. Yeah, I'm on YouTube, but um, just search for D Gardai or Douglas Gardai. Yep. That's uh, um, lots of stuff there. People do comment, you know, or send private messages there, and I do respond if I see them. YouTube's not the best at notifying me when I get a message. 
you know, but uh, if I notice you sent me a message, I'll respond to it. Great. So, uh, yeah, Douglas, you just mentioned the Facebook group that I'm starting up, and that's what I want to do is make that a place where people can respond to an interview like this one where there's something interesting, like yourself. You've done the uh, 16 tutorials, learning how to use Fusion 360, and uh, you yeah. have a particular interest. Great. You're doing something. Uh, you, you're doing something great with Fusion 360, and so we want to uh, want to uh, hear a little bit about that. But uh, uh, that's that's be a good place for people to uh, to learn a little bit about rockets and to uh, f maybe follow the conversation up. But, I just uh, want to say your 16 uh, <laughs> step program there. That was really really helpful. Great. Because you know. What, what I end up doing is like, okay, I ended up was down in Cincinnati visiting my brother's house. He said, oh, I got this 3D printer. And he said, well, how much was it? 200 bucks. I said, wow, a 3D printer for 200 bucks. I want to see this. And so he goes up there and I asked him, what do you use to design your designs? He said, Fusion 360. Uh-huh, there you go. And I knew Fusion 360 uh, is a product of Autodesk. And uh, and I get a lot of Autodesk free you know, education and all that stuff. And so I knew I could probably get that for free. So I never touched the CAD program in a sense, like I opened up CAD files and things like that, you know, but I never really took the time to learn how to do something in the CAD program. As an IT person, I have to install them on different computers, um, but I never actually sat down and started learning one, you know? And um, so I just looked at YouTube for tutorials how to do it. And a lot of them I didn't like because the first, le first few lessons are learning the interface. Like, I don't want to sit through three, four, five lessons learning the interface and how to save your files and, you know, <laughs> all, all that jazz. I want to, and then, then I came upon yours and you designed something from the very first lesson. Fantastic. You know, so that's, and I went through it all. And then, then I ran into some problems I, and I re asked you questions and you respond to the questions. <laughs> and then I sh start sh sending you some files and what do you think of this? <laughs> Yeah. And as you can see, as the progression of files I sent you, I was actually learning some stuff as I was going. You yeah, know? It's great so. to see how you were picking that up, Douglas, and uh, delighted to, to see that you're actually making stuff and uh, you know furthering your hobby. That's that's really good to see. Really, you really, know, a really contributed to the lessons. <laughs> Thanks. The lessons. Thank you so much. All right. Well, and, and well, maybe well, this is well, another thing that we can do on that Facebook group is we'll get you to show some of your designs there. And uh, maybe one I'm sure videos. you'll link some stuff that I showed you, videos and things. Great. But what really got me into uh, the, the current project I'm working on now, the uh, 3D printed Saturn V that really flies, um, end of August, beginning of September, I ended up getting the coronavirus. Oh no. And so I ended up in the hospital for about five nights with pneumonia. Oh. And then once I got home, it was quarantined for two weeks. So I got an unscheduled three-week vacation. <laughs> the first week I got a scenic view of the hospital's roof. Uh -huh. you know? And so once I got home, uh, you know, a, after a few days, I finally started feeling well enough to actually want to do something. You know, stir crazy. So um, I decided, well, you know what? I'm going to actually do some rocket designs in Fusion 360. There you go. Uh, and the first one I came up with was this. Okay, what are we looking at here, Douglas? What's that one? This is a Saturn, uh, a Apollo One. Uh huh. Like uh, block five and six. Okay. And it, the fins aren't to scale, but I deliberately did that for stability reasons. But as you can see, I was learning some, you know, details and how to do details and things like that. Excellent. And then once I designed that and designed the Apollo capsule, yes, you can take, I can recognize so, that. Um, I decided I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a little gel rocket, which was the test vehicle for the uh, the abort system. Uh huh. And as I was doing that, I started teaching myself how to do more details. Yes. You know? uh, what's that one? one? That's a different one. This one? Yeah. What's that one now? Now, this is the little Joe 2. Okay, Joe 2. A little Joe 2. And you can see there's details on the fins and, yep. you know, like that. Started learning how to do that. And then I wanted to do a Saturn 1B, um, which is 
Um, the thing about the Saren 1B is that the second stage of Saren 1B is the third stage of a Saren 5. I said, you know what? I really want to do the Saren 5 first. Uh huh. Yeah. And so I took the time to uh, draw a Saren 5. Now, the first. Um, and this was the first version of it. Whoa, look at that. And it came out way too heavy. Okay. You know, it came out really too heavy. And the fins are too small. And I made provisions that you can attach removable fins. Um, but what ended up happening, since it was too heavy, the option to add fins is, um, wouldn't work. And okay. plus, after finding out how brittle the plastic is, they would probably have the problem of the fins snapping off on each landing. So I wasn't too confident how stable this thing would be. So um, I did some calculations, but this skirt here that covers yep. the nozzle, yep. that's kind of tricky to put in the software to calculate the center of pressure. So I wasn't too confident where it predicted the center of pressure to be. And it said it was about right here. And, and now you're talking gravity. about a Douglas. You're talking about a, a simulation program that model rocket yes. builders use. Yeah, using Rockstem. Okay. Um, which is sold by Apogee, and then it's, the center of gravity is calculated by balancing the rocket. Okay, and it's and it was the center of gravity is about here, center of pressure is about there, and in theory it should be stable. But I wasn't confident in this location center of pressure, and so I just went ahead and launched the thing. And uh, when you don't have the center of pressure, center of gravity, same part, it does what a rear-wheel drive vehicle likes to do in icy roads, where the rear wants to be in the front. <laughs> right. And that's exactly what happened. Uh oh. So, um, so I started this, and this one I actually drew twice. And the reason for that was um, several reasons. One was um, learning how fine of a detail you can do on a 3D printer make it too small it's not going to print it and so i made them too small and they don't want to print them so i wanted to uh, so i wanted to draw them that first to try to do it you know with the file i already had but the, the i found fusion 360 bl on the little glitchy side and i found out i probably want to just restart this from scratch and that's what i did and now i'm working on the third version the third version is unique where you know, you, I got black filament, silver filament, um, and white filament. I said, well, I'm going to try to design this so you have all the pieces printed in the correct color. Right. And so, like, here's the uh, top section of the service module, the LEM shroud. They're printing the right colors. Then you got, you know, this. This is the, the bottom of it. Then you yep. got a section like this. It goes on here. Yep. That. And then the fins are silver. And those were going like this. Now they're deliberately over, they, they're deliberately enlarged. This is definitely not the scale. And the reason why they're deliberately enlarged is remember what I said about center of pressure? Yes. Okay, I want to make the fins bigger to help drag them back. Okay. Now, this weekend I'm going to be putting this whole thing together and weigh it and see if it's actually lighter. Because um, in some places the plastic got a little bit on the thicker side just to accommodate the uh, multiple colors. And um, so I, it'll probably be lighter but and than the original one, but how light? I don't know until I build the thing. And if it's not light enough, then I'll probably do a version three, which is. I could take version two parts and just fuse them all together. Yep. And do an extrude through it to make it the wall thinner. Sounds like and, a great project, uh, Douglas. We'll look forward to seeing some photos of that. We'll put them on the uh, yeah. on the Facebook page. Yeah, it's, it's definitely. And then once I get a model that might that actually flies, I'm considering selling them. Oh, there you go. Business. <laughs> I like the sound I mean, of that, Douglas. That sounds like a great idea. I spent a lot of time designing this. You, yeah. You know, and I invested, you know, a lot of money in a new computer to help me with this. Yep. Um, I kind of like to make some bling back, you know what I mean? Nice. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll see see what we can do to help. And what I might what I might do is I might have a limited run of them. That's an because idea. It takes, limited takes edition. Days, it takes three to four days to actually print all the parts for this. Okay. And that's assuming the part doesn't fail. Yep. 
Okay, every once in a while you got a part that fails when you print it and you gotta redo it. And some of these components can take upwards of, um, you know, 15, 20 hours of print. Okay, quite, so, so, quite something um, in it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I really don't see it, it being practical 3D printing on mass scale for this thing. So I might just do a, like a small run of maybe 10, 15 of these things, see people, you know, people buy them. And then after that small run, I might possibly make the, the files available for sale for people to uh, make Now you're own. talking. Now you're talking. Yeah. That's a good idea. So, uh, folks, uh, we'll put links in the description for uh, how to contact Doug, how to get hold of, get your hands on one of those rockets that he prints. And then uh, also some people might be interested in getting the files so that they can print their yeah. own. What a good idea. I've also, on the Rocketry forum, there's a, a model of, from Estes, the Mercury Redstone, and uh, it has built up fins out of balsa. And um, I just 3D printed the fins and I made those files available on the Rocketry forum. There you go. You know, so, you know, some things people ask me on the forum if I'm going to just make these files available. And I'm thinking, I put so much work in this, I just don't want to just give them out. Yeah, sure. Uh, um, and then also, like, I was doing some experiments with smaller stuff. Like, this is like a like an experiment fin can that okay. broke off there. Because this, this one failed in print. Remember I said sometimes they fail in print? Okay. This one obviously failed in print. But it gives me an idea of what worked and what didn't work. So I'm going to actually redraw this. I think the fins are too small. So what I'm going to do is extend this about six millimeters forward. Um, that'll allow the fins to be upscaled a little bit. And another, and there's a little launch lug mo uh, printed into it, and it's, a, yeah. it's too small, so. Okay. Um, and Doug, do those two pieces fit together? It will, it'll go in a tube like this. I see, gotcha. Hey, that's nice. Uh, it was, it just the tube got bent, there you go. And then I uh, made this little nose cone, which needs some little bit of fine tuning. That's the nose cone part. And what I mean by fine tuning is, I like to make it a little bit thicker. So, uh, I mean, it'll, it'll be fine that way, but I'm, you know, kind of bothers me that the tubing's a little bit thicker than the than the shoulder of the nose cone. So I figure I'll just go ahead and make it thicker. And Douglas, how far do you, how how high do you expect a little rocket like that to fly? Well, maybe a thousand feet. Not bad. It's quite it a small rocket. Will you see it okay? Yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some. I'll be a thousand feet. One of these Estes motors here. You know, yeah, like a this here is a C63. I would, I would, I would use like a C65, not three, but then a motor this size will take about a thousand feet. And then there's some of these that these are available okay. those will probably push them about 1500 feet wow and then they got some uh reloadables that you know more than twice the power of those black powder ones they'll probably if the fins stay on probably approach 2000 feet and that's but then you uh, risk a little rocket that most people could probably build or could print on their 3d printer is that right yeah Very it nice. is and I might sell these kits too. You know, they'll be a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah, and that, that would be a good starter good. starter project for a beginner, would it? Yeah, that would be, be perfect for a beginner. Um, I might actually have the fins separate from the this part, and the reason why I'm doing that is because they're the grain of the plastic is going this way. And so if it lands on a hard surface, it might snap off like okay. it did there. Oops. But this is where the print failed. The plastic was actually, uh, you know, yep. eh, like this. So it, it, somehow the 3D printer got confused or it maybe it maybe got jammed up. And, you know, in that particular spot, I'm not quite sure what happened. But every once in a while, the printer does something weird. Yeah, 3D printing, I think, is uh, a little bit of a trick. And there's a few things to learn, hey? Yeah, you learn like you learn about stuff you can do and stuff you can't do. Sure. Yeah. Um. Like uh, some things, like some things, like okay, you want to add supports, but when it creates the support, is like how do you get the support out of this thing? And you, know, you destroy yeah. your model trying to get the supports out. 
And so what I end up doing is I just make my own supports and then uh, tell the, no supports. And then, you know, that way uh, I design my own support so it, I can remove them. Okay. I've had cases where it supports completely filled up the void inside it and you, you couldn't get it out. Sure. You know? Okay, Douglas, look, thank you very much for talking. It's been really interesting to learn a little bit about rockets, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that uh, are really inspired and want to get involved in it and, uh, you know, begin to fly. Um, yeah. I suggest don't get in Corona, you know. <laughs> but if you do, and you're, uh, and you're stuck at home for two weeks going through your quarantine, um, you could probably learn how to use the 360 with this 16 steps. And uh, <laughs> we wouldn't want to wish that on anybody. Are cheap. Yeah, and 3D printers are actually fairly affordable now. So that's really good. That's really a good part of the story, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you got to make something new, like you know, unscheduled three-week vacation. Don't you just love it? You know? Yeah. It wasn't a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, 2021 will be better for everybody. Oh yeah, hopefully. You know, it's like I, you know, I heard like there's bubonic plague in China. And I said, I'm not worried about that because at least that's something that we already have. We already have a medicine for you know. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, it's still a big deal, but and I, I and I'm not actually sure if that really happened. You can't believe everything you see on Facebook, you know. <laughs> yeah, especially Fusion 360 websites, eh? <laughs> yeah. So okay, anyway, Douglas. I was talking with you, and yeah, I'm sure you're fantastic. Going to put some samples of, you know, videos and things like that. In this. Videos, pictures, and uh, we'll be looking forward to uh, posting anything that you come up with, Douglas. It'll be great. Yep. And I look forward to some more lessons. Thank you. you okay. Know, more we'll... advanced stuff. I heard yeah, you yeah. talk about how do you make stuff that snap together. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll see what you we can come up with in that line. That's a good idea. Yeah, and, uh, I, I experimented with it, but usually my snaps break off. Uh, okay. You know, and sometimes the parts yeah. don't print too. That's uh, that's another issue. It's like, why is it not printing? The... Well, I have to wait for your lessons to see what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> Actually, Douglas, I've only just got my first 3D printer. You're a few weeks ahead of me yet. But uh, oh, we'll see what uh, we can come up with. Maybe I'll pull some lessons in then. <laughs> <laughs> now you're talking. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye for now, Doug. Thank you so much. Yeah, you take care and hope. Bye now.